Hi, I'm Jesse Schramm, and I'm here with Tibby Hendren at the World Fest 2009 in Encino. Welcome. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. This is a very exciting concept of getting people together who think alike and feel alike and uh, are trying to do something to make our world better or keep it like it is. Is this um, your first time here? Uh, I, I think so. I can't, you know, I go to so many things. I can't. Yes, it is. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Now, I know that you were speaking up there and you did a fabulous job. What were you talking about? I know you're involved with so many different causes. What are some of the causes? Uh, well, the one that I'm mainly interested in right now is, is the, uh, uh, the Shambhala Preserve. And uh, I've been rescuing big cats, lions, tigers, leopard, mountain lions, servals since 1971. Oh my gosh, how did you get involved with that? Uh, well, it's a long story. I was doing two, <laughs> two films in Africa uh, and going to the different game preserves, and that was in, in 1969 and 1970. And during those years, environmentalists were, were talking about, if we don't do something right now, we editorially, uh, do something right now to save the animals in the wild by the year 2000, they will be gone. And it was a pretty scary thought. So a lot of awareness was going out, and we learned about the plight of the whale and the tiger, the panda, the elephant. Mm -hmm. And um, my then husband was a producer director, and we decided to do a movie about the animals in the wild. And we were kind of kicking around ideas as to should we um, should we focus on a sp specific species, uh, zero in on one animal, and you know all different kinds of thoughts, and then. We were going through the uh, Gorongosa Game Preserve in Mozambique, and there was a house that had been abandoned by a game warden because it flooded during the rainy seasons. So he moved out, and a pride of lion moved in. Oh wow! Oh, it was it was just it was absolutely magnificent. It yeah. was beautiful. They were the big maned lions, the svelte lioness, the the um, rowdy teenage lions, the little cubs, everybody living in that house. And they were sitting in the windows, going in and out the doors. They were napping on the verandas. They were on top of the roof. One was asleep in, the, in a, a dilapidated old porch swing out in front. And there must have been 25 cats. Wow. It was awesome. What have you, um, so that let became me, a preserve? Let me tell you what happened, though. So we thought, this is perfect. This is a, it's a, uh, the house with those lions in it is a perfect centerpiece for a movie. I mean, it's an outrageous idea. Right. And uh, we're using animals that um, most people are very fascinated by. Yes. So it was perfect. So anyway, there are the 25 or 30 lions living in that house were used in the script that we wrote. And uh, so we, con we were going to use Hollywood acting animals, have a nine month shoot over now. And um, uh, we, we gave the script to the trainers of these animals, and uh, they came back with, every one of them came back with us and said, you can't do this movie. Right. And we said, and why not? They said, because of instinctual dictates to fight. I don't want my cat hurt. I don't want to be hurt. Get your own animals to do the movie. So that's what we did. That's how it all started. That's how it started, and the first one was a rescue. A little, um, oh, he was about eight month old lion who somebody, a doctor in Mandeville Canyon had uh, uh, purchased this little adorable darling cub and as a pet, and then as he grew, he was, he completely destroyed the good doctor's house and um, took a pretty good chunk out of him, you know, so. Uh, so anyway, that's the way it started, and at one point we had 150 lions and tigers oh and gosh. leopards. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, all those years, uh, I was thinking, why aren't there laws against this? Because we were hearing such horrific stories about the about the treatment where these animals were living. <coughs> Excuse me. We have, um, we have a lion who was living in the, in the basement in a home outside of Branson, Missouri. A leopard who was purchased in Texas for $6,000. Looked like a little black kitten. And uh, they brought him to Newport Beach where he lived in a magnificent home. But as he grew older, as he grew, he started scratching the lady's satin sofas and chewing her Jimmy Choo's shoes. 
So she put him into a closet. Oh my God. And he lived in the closet. And the husband would come home and take him out at night and put great big leather gauntlets up to his shoulders, take the cat out to wrestle with him, thereby saying, this is what you do to people. Right. Great. So how you're treated is how his actions yes. will then play out and yes. you don't I mean you don't have a, a tiger or leopard as a pet anyway they're no, meant for the wild no you shouldn't so eventually I thought why aren't there laws against this because all of these animals were being bred right here in the United States to be sold as pets right. and uh, so I got a, a I got a bill together and uh, it's going to be introduced next week. What's, what's the bill called? It's titled the a Federal Ban on the Breeding of the Exotic Feline for Personal Possession. Oh my gosh, and what's um, the movie that you and your husband made? Is there a title for that? Is there some way that we can see it? Um, I don't know if you can see it. It, we, uh, it was released in 81, and uh, the title is Roar, R-O-A-R, like the lion's roar, okay. and it's insane. It is absolutely insane. That's but you can you can get it at the Shambhala Preserve. Okay. Then, oh my gosh. So now, um, where is that located? It's outside of Acton, California, off the 14 freeway. Okay. Okay. And what can um what can people that are listening do to help with that or help with the bill possibly? I'm not sure how all that works, but what can we do? Uh, well, uh, now we'll have a um, a house number on the bill and a Senate number and we'll put it up on our website, which is shambhala.org, S-H-A-M-B-A-L-A.org, O-R-G. Um, and um, uh, after the, you, we have the, the numbers, the House and Senate numbers, we're, uh, write to your congressman, write to your senators, write to the president, <laughs> and send them emails, call them, I mean, just harass them to stop this insanity. There's been over uh, uh, 570 uh, attacks by big cats wow. in the United States in the last five years, 38 deaths, and I think this is senseless. It shouldn't be happening. It's unneeded. It is totally unneeded, yes. absolutely. And it's horrific. These animals are so powerful. They are so beautiful. They have a great capacity for love. Mm -hmm. They have a sense of humor. They have a their, their inferiority complexes, their dominancy problems, and in a split second, they can kill you or harm you very, very badly without, without us really knowing why. Yeah. Now, I, um, I see that you're so passionate about this project and there's so much that's in you. And I know you're here today, there's, it's basically all vegan or vegetarian eating. What do you think about everything that's here today? Well, I, think, I think this is extremely impressive. Yeah. I think it's fabulous. The, uh, the publicity on it was abs obviously very good. I mean, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, look at the throngs of people. It's just amazing. And, uh, I'm very anxious to go and look around and see what's what's going on and um, uh, the vegan food I I, um, I find that the vegan food gets better and better all the time it really does all the different places and now they even have fast food vegan and everything but thank you so much for being here and please go take a look around and enjoy everything it's amazing meeting you and thank you so much for everything that you do let me know when you can come out to Shambhala I will definitely do so thank you so much and thank you guys for listening to Hendren and we'll hopefully see you soon